Morning guys, I think we're on day seven and day five in the CKGR, I think. And I'll tell you why I say that, because you know, when you're in a place like this, it just seems like all time and perspective on time disappears. Uh, it's been a fantastic couple of days. It's seven o'clock in the morning now. We woke up at 20 past five this morning to two prides of lion going off, one in that direction and another one behind me. Um, looks like two prides going off at each other, just communicating. The plans today are, uh, we're here at Sunday Pan campsite and today we head out to Lukubu campsite, which is past, I, th I believe we're gonna pass the campsite quarry that we stayed at the other day. So yeah, so looking forward to it. I think it's, a, I th I think it's about a three hour trip today. An absolute cracker of a day yesterday it was. And hopefully today holds more. Let's go and see what she has in store for us. Welcome, Welcome to Botswana. Be doing something a little bit different. Hey guys, how awesome is this? We are back. Two of our adventures sees us leave the Sunday Pan campsite and head for the Lukubu campsite. Traveling south, this trip is 46 kilometers of easy traveling. However, the Lukubu campsite just wasn't big enough for the four vehicle convoy. We pushed on a further 10 kilometers and stayed over at Leti Hau campsite for one night. Day seven in the CKGR, we drive for Tade Gate. This drive is an eight to nine hour drive. The Tade Bush campsite are a further 11 kilometers on from the gate. The following morning, we head for Bape. A 157 kilometers of thick sand makes this trip a tough one. Nine hours to do and expect a very wild camp upon arrival. Day nine sees us travel from Bape to Molossi. A 96 kilometer trip south with very thick sand. Allow for five to six hours travel time. At the end of the trip, we drive the 40 kilometers to Kutsi camp where we spend the last couple of days. This is our adventure. To view our first episode, click the link above. At this stage of the trip and after six days already spent in the CKGR, we look forward to what awaits us. New roads, new places and wildlife opportunities around the corner. It has to be said that the CKGR in the rainy season is special. Green savannah and the occasional splash through water make for a memorable adventure with good people. We head for the Kubu campsite, some 46 kilometers of easy driving. With vast open areas, enjoy the game viewing opportunities. This stretch of road does have bush lodges, so be careful for the occasional oncoming game ranger vehicle. As Chris and Roland left camp before us, Ed and I tackled the roads and enjoyed the journey. Documenting this adventure had its own unique set of challenges, but the thing that continually reminded us of where we were was the heat. Take it slow and enjoy the adventure. 
the CKDR is different and hoping the visuals I captured show for a trip I was privileged to do. A long day's drive, we pull into Letty Howe campsite for the night. The start of the long trip down begins tomorrow. There's a big storm coming, it's very early. Today we go to Kare. I don't know what the time is, all the watches are flat. Uh, we are at Leti Hau. So we were supposed to stay at Lekubu last night, but the campsite was a bit small, not the greatest campsite. So we pushed about 16 k's further on to Leti Hau. Great campsite, and now we've got a shorter drive to Kare. And have we seen lion yet? No, uh, that is my one sort of disappointment, but it is the the African bush, you can never say whether you'll see or not. We are now driving to Kare, and guess what? The rain has fallen, and proper, I mean absolute proper. The roads are full of water. It's seven o'clock in the morning. We packed everything up before the rain fell and like that it came yesterday's drive was a 43 kilometer drive it was a long day what a day hey it was a long day we're pushing through to kare and i believe that that's going to take us anywhere from six to seven hours driving let's try and get to kare i know that we have piper pan in the middle We are here at Piper Pan and it is spectacular. We've just come to the water hole where we've just watched a massive herd of blue wildebeest come in and have a drink. And now we're watching thousands of thousands of sand grouse coming in to drink. And what's very interesting with these little birds is that they come in, they come in absorb water into their feathers, grab a quick drink, and then take that water back to their chicks. Um, so it just, it's just teeming with life, humming. There's a buzz in the air. CKGR has to be on your list of places to come see. And Piper Pan pretty much is unlike all the other pans that we've been through, just in terms of bird life and game counts. It's a lot higher. And also this is the first time I think we've seen a big herd of wildebeest. So yeah, just fantastic to be here. We spoke to one of the guys that's camping here and uh, said they've seen plenty lions. So let's go and find them. Yeah, we just stopped um, and I've drifted a little bit away from the vehicles which you're not necessarily supposed to do look guys when you come out to a place like this just be cautious I mean there are lions around here and yeah apparently with what Roland was saying it's got the highest number of lions per square kilometer so just be vigilant uh, keep your wits about you 
and just yeah just have a bit of bush sense and etiquette also guys to those of you who do come out to the ckgr stay on the main roads as always uh tread lightly is the philosophy i always like to punt don't drift off the roads don't go and drive on the grass to go to an island that you shouldn't be going to if there are no roads to that island guys just stick to the main roads it's uh it's 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 the thing to do the right thing to do i'm refueling i've got 58 k's of range and we about 32 k's from Skade. i'll probably make it but why risk it we stopped in a nice open area roland has chosen a nice where the bush is not too thick and yeah we're just throwing in one jerry can i haven't filled up anything yet since we left rockoff so i'll chuck the rest in later i can give you so tilted yeah, so it should be so tilt it all the way and now now do it again what jiggle it yeah yeah, yeah. We drove 136 kilometers today in all types of ecosystems and different sand conditions. We started off the morning at six o'clock. We left camp and we got hit by a major storm. I mean, within 15 minutes, the roads were completely flooded as it were. And then we drove in to corrugation and then we drove into semi-thick sand and more corrugation, undulations, uh, rolling hills out onto pans. So yeah, just an absolutely long day of driving, but with a great midpoint, and that was Piper Pan. It was fantastic. We sat at the waterhole. We saw Namaqua sand grass coming in by the thousands, but we didn't see any line. So the hunt continues, and what we've realized is that after tonight, we have four more nights here in the CKGR. You know, with the different vehicles, different setups, different tire configurations. We even have an Echo 5 trailer being towed, which has done fantastically well behind the LC200. And yeah, it's just, it's been one of those trips that, that where does the time go? Where does it go? And yeah, the realization hit us today that we only have four more to go and we need to make the most of it. So tomorrow we do a 160 kilometer trip from Tare to Bape. And I believe that the road is not favorable. So I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be an adventure following day we go from Pape to Molosi which I believe is also a seven hour drive so we've got a lot of driving to do but looking forward to getting into the Kutsi and stay over at Molosi I believe it's quite a nice campsite we'll see you tomorrow <laughs> With Chris leaving early in the morning, Roland, Ed and myself take the opportunity to freshen up as we get ready for the hard day's drive ahead. Feeling knackered from the previous day's drive, I feel apprehensive for thick sand. Would the fully loaded vehicles cope? Not being so sure, I drive behind the Echo with caution. We are officially uh, have four we officially have four days, four nights left. We are on the route now from Tare to Bape. We had a massive thunderstorm come through camp in the evening, about an hour or two after we set up. Sat around the campfire and had a really chilled evening. Um, we're now on the road and actually thank goodness that rain came through because the thick sand is actually quite nice now very firm to drive on making it easier there's a lot of undulations in the in the road it is a sandy road with an an okay middle manaki or middle island dividing the two tracks of the road so i think it might be easy going today i hope 
but um, that might change as the sun comes out and the sand becomes more viscous and loose yeah so just taking an easy drive another great day so some precautionary advice you know make sure you have a at least two little fire extinguishers you know make sure you have enough water in the vehicle think of things like getting a seed net albeit there's no grass in the middle monarchy of the road of the track but yeah you know maybe something got caught in up underneath and the vehicle ignited and can happen just like this very quickly so take it easy when you're out doing these trips the, the going is tough now the sand has got thicker there's a lot of heavy undulations so um, be careful my advice would be to get underbody protection as as we need a lot of momentum to go through the thick sand fuel consumption has gone up as well so uh, we were at 15.5 we're now at 16.6 .6 liters per 100 kilometers so yeah i mean big changes big changes in an hour so but yeah exciting i mean here in the ckgr and driving a road that's seems like it's heading to nowhere fantastic what an adventure an absolute adventure as it happens and sometimes more so than not uh, Ed's got a got a puncture in his front left tire unfortunately the BF Goodrich KO2 took a knock there I think maybe a stump sticking out in the road um, we've been quite vigilant trying to avoid them so guys just be careful when driving out here on any dirt road watch out for those spikes that stick out into the road there's some that you just can't see even underneath the sand so just be vigilant and, and keep an eye out unfortunately it's quite a big cut his tire pressure management system alerted him immediately as it happened and the tire just went flat straight away so we're here now to try and fix it normally it comes off with the tire this way okay grab the lock nut Um, something to bear in mind guys if you can get one of these I've got a little bottle jack um, it's rated for 10 tons so more than adequate enough to lift it and what's quite nice with a bottle jack is it comes with a with an adequate base plate so even in this this damp sand it should be able to help the guys are just pulling the spare wheel off the back and, and then we're going to replace the tires. I believe it might be a different tire size to the ones he's got on. So let's see what happens. But yeah, just be cautious. Things happen and you make a plan. It's one of those things, eh? Okay, so <clears throat> we have 27 kilometers to get to Pape. If my calculations are right, with us leaving at 7 o'clock this morning, we've done six and a half hours of driving, maybe seven. And um, sure, it's been a day, and what a day, what a day. With Ed getting a puncture, the temperatures being as hot as they are sand being as hot as it is and soft as it is it's been a bit of a slow laborious drive to be honest i haven't seen much game in fact i've seen zero game so i think going forward for any of you doing kare to bape or vice versa i think the intention for you should be to put your head down and get through the journey it's a long trip so 
be cautious take it easy watch out for tree stumps and root stumps in the road and I'd say sit between a speed of 25 to 35 kilometers an hour and watch out for those soft spots I mean it's they're not challenging I haven't left four high the whole day I've been fluctuating between second and third gear and occasionally jumping into fourth gear yeah so it's been quite a pleasant drive just a long one We drove from Kaire today to Bape and we got in, it took us about seven and a half hours to get in. Um, but we're here now and it's fantastic. But I just want to point something out. Guys, for those of you who are in the CKGR, please be mindful of one major thing and one major thing only. There are snakes in camp. We've just come across, when we arrived, we found one puff adder chilling underneath an acacia tree and myself and Ed and everyone was just taking sunset photos moving around the campsite and walking backwards and literally if it weren't for Ed I would have stepped on a puff adder it was that close literally half a meters gap one more step and it could have been tickets you get bitten out here in the CKGR by a puff adder and it's big problems it's a really really big thing so suggestions going forward always be perceptive of what's going on around you within a five meter radius and um, just be cautious be cautious and be open-minded to possibility of something going wrong it does happen it's not to say that it's all bad but just be mindful is all i say scorpion spiders and snakes they are about this is a crazy wild area and we're in it we're at CKGR, we're at Bape, we've just had a fantastic sunset, we've got the fire going, time for a cold beverage. Right, another day of driving, we're driving from Bape to Malosi, and yeah, the sand is thick, on this route the sand is thick, and I think it's got a lot to do with the fact that there are a couple of villages along the route. So this road that we're driving now is thick in sand. And uh, yeah, the adventure continues. And I tell you what we just saw now, which I think was pretty amazing, was a mole rat. I don't know what species of mole rat. I know it wasn't a naked mole rat, but yeah, shame. The poor little bugger looks like he's home was squashed en route as they tend to um, make their breathing and exit holes in the middle manaki of the road um, but yeah shame sad to see the little guy wandering about and i'm sure he'll get picked off by a goshawk or something a little bit later we obviously left him where he be but just taking it easy on this trip from bape to malosi uh, malosi we camp for two nights so um, hopefully I can get to freshen up because as of uh, yet uh, a day's hard graft yesterday um, yeah I, I need a shower it's lots of tall grass and the bushes are closed in and stuff so I'm gonna go around um, another pan through Marichele and then we'll turn it up to Melosi if we go this way we're just gonna end up scratching the cars and a lot of grass in the in the radiators and stuff so i think we must just go the other way um i think we're about 30 k's 35 k's uh from a lossy um yeah it's a nice day no game still we here at malossi pan i've joined ed shotgun in the lc 200 we've just come down to malossi waterhole and obviously we're staying at Molossi campsite. We've seen the usual stuff, planes games, giraffe, oryx, a couple of ostrich with little ones today, which was quite special. Always awesome to be in Africa and always fantastic to be in Botswana. I think when you're sitting in a place like this, it's just spectacular. Sun's setting now and we're gonna head on back to camp and get ready for the evening.
Morosi campsite is in the south of the Kutsi Game Reserve. The Kutsi was officially declared a protected area in 1971 and was the second game reserve in Botswana to be established on tribal land. The name Kutsi means place where you can kneel down and drink, as this reserve is part of an ancient river system that once flowed into the Makarikari salt pans. Water here is scarce, so the pans we visited are fed by borehole pumps. As a result, the viewing opportunities are fantastic. As Ed and I leave the water hole, we witness a sunset that was simply magic. Okay, so I've spent the morning on a game drive and I bumped into the Leopard and Lion research guys. Probably spent around half an hour with them, chatting to them, and they said up north here, Malosi side and Moreswe side, no lions. Lion activity is all down at Kutsi. So apparently we're the only people in the park, well they think. Um, so we've, I came back to camp, I'm getting everyone shifting and we're heading down to Kutsi. Hopefully on our last two nights we'll finally have some success with the lions. So, um, another hot, hot day. We moved from a Molossi campsite to Kutsi this morning. Um, we met up with the Leopard and Lion research group and they told us that Kutsi campsite was the place to be as they've got a lot of new lion spottings and findings there. So we headed off, it's about a 43 kilometer drive. Both myself and Ed remained behind camp. We packed up in our own time and yeah, I just took a leisurely drive there, but an absolutely blazing hot day. So we relaxed at camp, made a bit of grub and came out for a game drive. We saw an awesome sighting of cheetah and met up with a crew driving through also from South Africa and they guided us to some lions. There's two lionesses and what looks like three cubs <laughs> on a red hartebeest kill. I don't know how old it is but I think that's besides the point. We're here, she's literally 10 meters away from us so just keeping it down. Um, letting her be there lying up. It's been a very hot day. I'm sure they're gonna start moving just now. It's always one of those things, you know, you come and we searched, we searched, we searched. I mean, how long has it been, Ed? Nine days? Nine days. Nine days, we've been slugging it out. Shame, giving Roland a blimmin' hard time about it too. And here we are, and it's unfortunate because we split up from them. They went to go and look at the bat fox den and we were fortunate enough at the cheetah kill. These guys rolled up on us and said, hey, listen, lions, go. And we went. So yeah, loving it. Woke up early this morning and Roland went out to the water hole because we heard lions in the camp this morning. Thorns, thorns. Um, and everyone said uh, they had heard the lion. Anyways, we jumped into the cars and we headed out there now. Apparently, a mother with four cubs and a male lion. So, yeah, let's go and see what we see. It's, uh, what's the time? It's 
quarter to seven in the morning. We're also a little bit worried because we've got feedback from South Africa about how bad this corona is going off there. So we're both excited and a little bit concerned, I suppose. Finally, we find what we'd been hearing all these nights, a male lion who we'd later find out to be named Rocket, and one of many being studied and monitored by the Leopard and Lion research team in the Greater Kutsi area. As soon as we shared the moments in his presence was as quick as it soon ended. With the beady eyes of onlookers studying his every move, the King of Kutsi vanished into the bush. With a morning like this, our trip began to feel complete, our searching had paid off, and we could now relax. We invited the researchers round to our camp for dinner that night, and as it was our last night, Ed cooked up one of his poikies. fitting meal shared between like-minded people around our largest fire yet. We went full out on prep, cooking and dessert. Our way of saying thank you to our mates for a memorable trip. Even the Chochos gathered around our lights at night for what seemed like a closing farewell party.
We sat around the fire and took it all in. What a privilege, what a moment. Okay, so last morning in the CKGR, it's quite sad really, um, woke up at about half past five this morning to a big male lion calling, I don't know, maybe 10 meters from camp. Um, Chris and Roland, they've shot back through to South Africa a little bit early. Ed and myself have uh, hung back just a little bit just to enjoy the last few moments. We still got quite a bit to pack up, but what a fantastic trip, hey? It's really come to life at the very last end or three days of the trip, which has made it quite special, to be honest. Um, as an overlander or someone getting into the overlanding life, this has been something else, hey? This really has been an amazing trip. Fantastic in every means and way. A lot of hard work, a lot of distance traveled. Um, what do I take out of a trip like this? I suppose it's the same really. I think, you know, when you do something as long as the 11 day trip, your adventurous spirit is just, I don't know, just continuously alive and following and moving and adapting and changing. We at Kutsi campsite and I really enjoyed it. The fuel's done very well. I think the fuel has been quite high, sitting at 16.6 liters per 100 kilometer. That extra long range tank, uh, 83 liter that I got from Front Runner, has absolutely done its job and I'm so stoked that I got it. The only downside with it is that you have to move. If you've got big tires like I do, then you have to move your tire up to the roof, which is fine because with the Front Runner roof rack, the Slimline 2s, Brilliant, absolutely cannot say enough about them. They're just practical and they serve an overlander's purpose just because you can configure your setup to however you like. I've been over all type of terrain with the guys and nothing, absolutely nothing, nothing wrong with it whatsoever. I do have the quick release mounts for the uh, Gen 2 tent, rooftop tent, and they do tend to make a little bit of a rattle going over corrugation. But other than that, I'm so happy I made that decision to move over to the Front Runner Slimline 2 roof rack systems. They're just working and I'm, I'm, they're gonna change the, change the way I overland. So big ups to Front Runner, really like it. So one of the things, guys, when you come to the CKGR, leave the campsites as you found them. Don't leave your rubbish lying around. If you have a way or means of getting rid of the ash, do so. I do know you've got to put a little bit of ash in the latrines. But we're going to take our rubbish back out, which is what's expected when you come to the CKGR. And I can't tell you how much rubbish we've used in, th in the span of this trip. It's absolutely ridiculous. We got into Botswana yesterday and as you know the storms came down and the heavens opened up. It was quite a miserable evening but we made the most of it, set up a fire when it calmed down and stopped. Overcooked because we had a lot of stuff to get rid of and we're still nowhere near that. Um, but yeah, upon reflecting the CKGR, oh, what a fantastic trip. 
traveling all the way from the north all the way to the south definitely a bucket list trip for myself and something I will never ever forget truly an experience would I do it again look from the trip from um, Kare to Bape to Malosi you lose three days it's very hard going and very hard going for your vehicle but here's some interesting facts so when we left four ways we were obviously at zero I zeroed out all my trip um, computer and analogs we've done a total of 1907.5 kilometers for the duration of this trip my average fuel consumption is 14.2 liters per 100 kilometers which I think is quite good which is not too bad and we've driven a total of 78 hours and 19 minutes which I suppose doesn't really sound like much but in the context of doing a trip like this I think it's quite high you spend a lot of time in your vehicle which is my happy place to be honest and yeah, like I say you know my adventurous spirit will always be there and it's always ignited by going out and doing trips like this I think coming to Botsalana is just a nice way to ease out of a trip like that and yeah I look forward to the next one I don't know what we've got planned guys as always thank you for your support it really means a lot to me subscribe to the channel if you haven't I hope you've enjoyed this series we had a hell of a lot of fun it was an amazing adventure and as always I look forward to taking you out there on our next one stay safe guys keep trucking and till the next one cheers thank you for watching this episode and hope you enjoyed the series if you haven't subscribed and would like to see more of our future adventures then click on the bell icon below thank you to all our product sponsors and partnerships and to the gents we traveled with thank you for an epic adventure five years it's taken me to get here it's been an absolutely magic journey and a hell of a lot of learnings so let's dive right on in